Welcome back to Bring to Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. Shriners Children's Hospital in Boston, which specializes in pediatric burn victims, says it's treating two children recently flown in from Ukraine with severe burns. Two children, accompanied by their parents, were transported by air and arrived in Boston late last week. A doctor explained that the burns were caused when the children's mother was boiling water but put one pot on the floor while bombs outside were exploding. One child suffered injuries from the boiling water on the floor while the boy suffered a separate incident where he climbed up near the stove and spilled the boiling water onto himself. The Shriners Children's Healthcare System, which operates more than 20 medical facilities in North America, says it's provided medical help to Ukrainian children dating as far back as the 1990s. John McCabe, executive vice president of the Shriners Children's Healthcare System, said in a statement, quote, Due to the current state of affairs in Ukraine, the country's medical infrastructure is understandably challenged. We are uniquely positioned to help these children from Ukraine because our physicians, nurses, and therapists have extensive experience in providing care for children who suffer life-threatening burn injuries, including in natural disasters or other urgent situations." End quote. Stop the spread sites have downsized throughout the state of Massachusetts now that home rapid tests have become more widely available. With the availability, more people are opting for the at-home tests instead of making appointments and waiting in long lines. Jay Levine of Springfield said, quote, I think it's real important that we have the at-home tests. It's just too bad that we don't have the follow-up to know exactly how much COVID is out there, end quote. For those who would prefer to do an at-home test, but be sure to report your results so the state can more accurately report data. Due to this, the number of COVID infections reported in Massachusetts is estimated to be lower than the real number of cases. All across the South Shore, COVID-19 rates have increased in the latest Mass DPH report on cases by municipality. According to the report that was released last Thursday, the number of new cases in the region rose by 38.6%. In the week ending April 16th, the number of cases reported in the region was 1,386, which is up from 1,000 the previous period. The new case numbers are more than two and a half times the March 19th count and a fraction of the 20,000 cases at the height of the Omicron surge just three months ago. Cohasset and Norwell had case rates above the statewide average of 24.8 case daily cases per 100,000 people. The state is still monitoring and reporting health trends. On Friday, over 55,000 molecular tests were conducted and 2,303 new positive cases were reported. Currently, 389 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 25 are in the ICU. Two new deaths were also reported. This report does not include data from the weekend. The town of Braintree also continues to monitor COVID data from the state. In the last two weeks, the Town Hall reported 125 new COVID-19 cases. The Town Hall website currently shows 9,776 positive cases in total. There have been no new fatalities reported in two weeks, keeping the number of total deaths at 137. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. The COVID-19 vaccine doesn't contain the virus, so you can't get COVID from the shot. You may experience things like muscle aches, fever, or tiredness, but these are most likely signs that your body is building immunity to protect against the virus. Learn more. Welcome back. The Braintree Police Department announced that the department's yellow English Labrador canine retriever Lucky passed away due to old age just three weeks before turning 14. Lucky was adopted by the police and assigned to Officer Richard Cyber in the canine unit in 2010. Deputy Cahoon said, quote, he was one of the most prolific drug dogs we have encountered, one of the best in Massachusetts, end quote. Over the years, Lucky played a significant role in seizing millions of dollars in illegal narcotics and money. The Braintree Police Department now has one patrol dog and is currently looking to add another. The annual Braintree Beautification Day will be held the morning of Saturday, April 30th. 
Volunteers are asked to meet at 8 a.m. at the Braintree Town Hall for location suggestions and to collect rakes, bags, and work gloves. Target areas include the Town Hall Mall, the Braintree Historical Society grounds on Washington Street, the Beach and Park at Sunset Lake, Peniman Park on Cleveland Avenue, John Leroy Way at Braintree High School, and Smith Beach on Edge Hill Road. Braintree Mayor Kakora said, quote, Beautification Day is a great way for our community to come together and play a role in beautifying our town, and I hope to see everyone on April 30th, end quote. For more information, contact the Mayor's Office at 781-794-8100 or the Recreation Office at 781-794-8901. The Town of Braintree will begin their annual flushing program starting on Monday, April 25th. Residents are advised to expect the possibility of experiencing dirty water during this period. The hours of flushing will be from 7 p.m. until 5 a.m. Monday through Thursday and should have a minimal effect on the water distribution system. Signs will be posted on Main Streets in the areas that the flushing will occur and the program should be completed by the end of August. Please refrain from doing laundry during these hours and always check to ensure that your water is running clear before resuming laundry activities. If it is not clear, then run your water until it is. For further security, you can run your washing machine without a load to prevent the possibility of iron stains. As a reminder, the Town of Branchy will not be responsible for damages to laundry due to maintenance work on the water distribution system. If you have any questions or concerns, you can call the Branchy Water Department at 781-794-8097. Braintree's annual rabies clinic, sponsored by the Town of Braintree, Braintree JCs, and Dr. Joseph Kosman, DMV of the VCA, will be held on Saturday, May 14th from 10 a.m. to noon outside of the Braintree Town Hall. The vaccination fee per animal is $15, and residents are asked to bring their animal's current rabies certificate. A trampoline park and virtual reality experience called Space Zero opened earlier this month at South Shore Plaza. Space Zero features Playground Zero, a ball pit and obstacle course, space trampolines, climbing walls, claw machines, and multiple virtual reality experiences. Space Zero challenges the senses with an obstacle course, virtual reality arcade games, and trampolines to elevate your mood as well as your body. For more information, you can visit the Space Zero website at spacezero.us. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Protect yourself from mosquito and tick bites. Use an EPA approved repellent anytime you're outdoors. Spray it on your hands first, then spread it on your face, neck, arms, and legs. Learn more at mass.gov slash mosquitoes and ticks. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Let's get right into more stories. Residents in the town of Westford are anxiously waiting for the answers after firefighters battled seven brush fires on the same conservation land in recent weeks. The latest fire happened Friday morning, prompting Westford police to bring in a canine unit. Lieutenant Mike Baralt with the Westford Police Department said, quote, We are canvassing the area, seeing if people knew of any suspicious people in the area, suspicious activity that may have come up on cameras, end quote. The land spans more than 100 acres between River and Depot streets. Photos and videos along the popular hiking path showed charred branches where fires have burned about 30 acres. Investigators worry that someone could be intentionally starting the fires. So far, firefighters have been able to contain the fires, but there's concern that with so much dry brush, a windy day could potentially push the danger right into neighborhoods. Randolph Police Chief Anthony Marag said investigators have brought eight more charges against Anne Rose Florent, a former home health aide, suspected of stealing valuables from senior housing complexes in half a dozen communities. The charges stem from thefts from numerous senior assisted and independent living communities throughout the area. Victims have also been located in Braintree and Westwood. Police say Florent went into numerous apartments in senior-assisted and independent living compl complexes and took items including jewelry, designer handbags, credit cards, checks, cash, and other items. The credit cards were used to buy large amounts of merchandise at local stores. 
She is charged with identity fraud and three counts of larceny from a building in Quincy, two counts of receiving stolen property in Weymouth, and charges of larceny from a building and receiving stolen property in Cohasset. The investigation is ongoing and anyone who believes they may be a victim of theft should contact the Randolph Police Department at 781-963-1212 and ask for Detective Mark Abramson or Detective Christopher Jones. On April 23rd, protesters joined the Four River residents against the Compressor Station for a special Earth Day event. The Red Rebels, an international performance troupe dedicated to highlighting the global climate crisis, leads the parade and protest of the Weymouth Compressor Station as they walk across the Four River Bridge during Frack's Great Tide Rising. People gathered as they walked across the Four River Bridge holding signs reading shut it down, no compressor station, should never have been approved, and more during the protest. The Boston Area Brigade of act activist musicians performed while walking. Then after the procession, participants gathered in the park for a rally with various speakers and lively music, such as Reverend Fred Small and Rabbi Shoshana Friedman, who led the group in song. For more information about FRAX, you can visit nocompressor.com. Quincy residents gathered at Butler's Pond on Saturday to celebrate the return of 23 turtles to their home habitat. The turtles had been relocated to the New England Wildlife Center in Weymouth for nine months during a $1.4 million dredging project to remove 3,900 cubic yards of sediment from the, from the pond. The dredging allowed the pond to return to its original depth and stopped invasive weed growth that, the, that bothered that bothered local residents for decades. Joe Martinez, the cur curatorial assistant of the Harvard Museum of Comparative Zoology, said they have captured three kinds of turtles from the pond. The painted turtle, a smaller native turtle known for a red pattern on its back, the snapping turtle, a larger native turtle, and the red-eared slider, a species originally from Mississippi. One of the largest snapping turtles they took care of and released again was estimated to be 25 years old. Julie Sullivan, a city environmental scientist who is in charge of the project, said their next step will be restoring the plants around the pond. Students at South Shore Vocational Technical High School will hold a walkathon on campus later this month to raise money for classmate Nick Renous, who was recently diagnosed with cancer. Nick and Abington Jr. in the school's electrical shop stopped attending classes in January and was diagnosed soon after. Junior class president Joseph Ercolini and his fellow student council members decided they'd host a fundraiser to help Nick's family cover medical bills and other needs. Joseph also launched a GoFundMe page for Nick with a goal of raising $5,000. That goal was reached in one day and the total has since surpassed $7,000. Principal Mark Aubrey says the fundraising event will be a great opportunity to bring students together as a community, and he estimates the students will raise more than $10,000. The walkathon will be held from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. on Saturday, April 30th. You can also visit the GoFundMe page titled Walkathon for Nick to donate. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Mosquitoes are out. Protect yourself from mosquito bites and the illnesses they can cause, like Triple E and West Nile virus. When outdoors, use an EPA-approved repellent and wear protective clothing. Learn more at mass.gov slash mosquitoes and ticks. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now, here are some movie recommendations for a night out at the theaters. First up in entertainment is something for the kiddos. The Bad Guys tells the story of a group of bad guys who, after years of countless heists and being the world's most wanted villains, are finally caught. Mr. Wolf makes a deal that he has no intention of keeping in order to save them all from prison. Having the bad guys go good. The bad guys set out to fool the world that they've been transformed. Along the way, Mr. Wolf begins to suspect that doing good for real may give him what he's always secretly longed for. So when a new villain, a new villain threatens the city, can Mr. Wolf persuade the rest of the gang to actually become the good guys? The Bad Guys was released on April 22nd and can now be seen in theaters. 
Next up is Unplugging, starring Eva Longoria and Matt Walsh, who in order to revive their marriage and reconnect, they take a self-prescribed digital detox weekend to a remote mountain town. What starts as a perfect weekend getaway without technology quickly spirals out of control, forcing them to discover the only way home is to rely on each other. Unplugging was released in theaters on April 22nd and can now be seen. And finally in entertainment is Father Stew, based on a true story starring Mark Wahlberg as Stuart Long, an amateur boxer whose career is ended doing, due to an injury, who later finds his purpose in an unexpected place. After meeting Carmen, played by Teresa Ruiz, a Catholic Sunday school teacher, Stu is determined to win her over and begins going to church as a means to impress her. Then after surviving a terrible motorcycle accident, Stu is left wondering if he can use his second chance to help others find their way, leading him to the surprising realization that he is meant to be a Catholic priest. Despite a devastating health crisis and the skepticism of church officials and his estranged parents, Stu pursues his vocation with courage and compassion, inspiring not only the closest to him, but countless others along the way. You can watch Father Stu in theaters. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinides, and thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.